What is up, everybody? Welcome to another live Pin the Gas podcast on this Willie Wednesday afternoon. And I have the legend himself and the birthday boy, everybody. Dustin back up in the house. Dustin Richards, man. But before we get into it, you guys already know the deal and the routine. This episode is brought to you by Bison. And I say this to everybody out there. Don't buy an off-the-rack suit because it's not going to fit 90% of us at least perfect, right? And when you have a suit that don't fit you perfect, it hinders your body position, your riding experience, causes arm pumps, and all kinds of crazy shit, right? So what I need you guys to do is go to bisontrack.com, get your full custom suit started. You pick the colors, you pick the designs, the logos, perforated, kangaroo, cow high, undersuit, chest protector, gloves, the whole nine. Again, ladies and gentlemen, bisontrack.com. What is up, Dustin? And how's What's your birthday up? been, buddy? Thank you. Hey, following up with your whole bison. Uh, yeah, man, don't be the don't be diaper butt out there. Don't be the guy with the, the don't be diaper butt. <laughs> don't don't be poo butt out there. Okay. <laughs> Get a suit that fits. It's uh, for your safety as well. It no, it, it seriously it is. You know, and and until you actually get a full suit that fits you, that's tailor made for you, then you'll understand what everybody's talking about you'd be like dude i've been missing out this whole time you know and you're gonna spend a lot of money on an off the rack suit i mean they're not cheap let's just be honest um but yeah man so listen dustin it's your birthday bro so what you been doing for your birthday working on motorcycles <laughs> i got this harley man i got a Harley. so um arma's letting r6s run i guess because it's uh discontinued and it's old now uh we can uh, it's something with Moto America. I haven't really read all the new rules for 2025, but yeah, check it out. We got a little, little scan. Got the motor coming out. The motor's out of it already. That was the last time I ran with Daytona. And then I got my little Harley over here. That's my. What's up, Cali, Max, all the Cali crew? Awesome, awesome people. Dude, you're gonna have to take that helmet out and show everybody. We can do that. Yeah, we let's see that bad boy. And how did you team up with them again, man? Some of the Florida boys, Adrian Mitchell, Todd Wagner, Derek Johnson. I mean, there's a bunch of people, but uh, they hooked me up with years ago. Um, and I always had this one that's got a scrape. You see my, my photos when I dragging the helmet on the sidecar? I did. Well, there you go. Oh, I love it, dude. But check it out. This is the new uh, the Catalyst. Um, it's, oh, I mean, see, I forgot how much it weighed. Sorry, Max. I know I'm supposed to be on point with all this, but they – uh. Man, they hook up my cheap pads. They send me visors. They the dirt bike. Man, it's one of the best sponsors I've ever had. It's I broke my neck a while back, so um, having a very light helmet and tight. I got a smaller head, even though my head's big. You know, um, I uh, I gotta have a light helmet, especially for like endurance racing and stuff like that. It just kills my neck, man. And I'm I'm getting on today. I'm 44, so there's times I will. <laughs> I will wake up like, what did you do? I'll come, I'll come over like this. So, well, what happened to you? I woke up. <laughs> like, I don't have a cool story. No, nah, I hear you. You're uh, as you get older, your body aches in places you never thought you even knew existed. You're like, wait a minute, Man, look, I didn't know I had a bone there. I busted my weenus. Look at that. That's my weenus. I <laughs> <laughs> love it. <laughs> it's even got a little mushroom head on it. Yeah, I was like, I call. There's a fellow sidecar racer. Her name, what is her name? She's an anesthesiologist. Come to find out, so she's like, you know, she's a doctor. So I'm like, hey, is this okay? Should I pop it? And like, no, everybody, like, no, no, no. I'm like, I'll be like, I got me a squirt gun. <laughs> <laughs> a nasty one. Yeah, but nasty yeah, one. Man, uh, but yeah, man, getting old sucks, guys. Getting old sucks. I call it getting young. Getting young sucks, man. You know, it's like, uh, yeah, yeah. But I enjoy it, man. I enjoy the the journey. You know, that's that's what it's about is is the journey, not the destination. We all know what the destination is, um, but it's the journey. You know, uh, leading up to that is what what matters the best and the most. You know, um, and you know when you're young, Dustin, you try to fit in where you get in, try to be popular with the popular kids and all that bullshit. I figured out kind of at a young age that uh, it was a that wasn't for me. It was a waste of time and energy, man. It's like, fuck it, dude. I just want to be me and be the real me. And you either like me or you don't. 
it don't hurt my feelings at all. I just see it as it's your loss, right? It all goes back to, and it, what I say all the time, none of us are strangers or just friends that haven't met yet. You know what I mean? Right. Um, What's so that, like the, the separation type of deal? <laughs> six degrees, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, dude, it's your birthday again, bro. What What's for dinner? I see you uh, drinking a cerveza right now. Man, I am. I, I've been, uh, it's Twisted Tea, man. On the bottom of these caps is actually, let's see what this one says. This one says Grunt. So, me and uh, this very special young lady friend of mine, and she's uh, like a daughter to me. We come up with this Twisted Tea game. I, um, it's pretty cool, though. It's got words, so you have to come up with the most um, the most thoughtful sentence. You can come up with a sentence, and you can take people's caps, and you can add caps. I don't remember all the rules, because they actually haven't had a sit down and play it, plus she's too young to drink Twisted Tea. But, you know, as far as coming up with the game, uh, game um, material, aced it. But, yeah, that's a little Mary. Shout out to Mary if you're watching. Uh, but, yeah. Good stuff, dude. Good stuff. Good stuff, man. Well, shout out to Mary. Yeah, if you're watching, and, and my buddy Emmanuel just said, Happy birthday, Dustin. Thanks, Emmanuel. That's what's up. Yep, that's exactly what's up. So, listen, Dustin, dude, talk. I got to know about Laguna Seca, right? You called me up. You said, Hey, I got this deal going on. I get to go to Laguna, do the sidecars. It's always been my dream, bro. So, tell the story. The dream has been lived. I got goosebumps right now just talking about it. Mad uh, hats are off to uh, Albertville Airport. You know who you are. He's wanted to stay anonymous on this whole deal. Huge. Uh, but first and foremost on this whole deal was uh, Stephen. I don't know how I'm going to butcher your name, buddy. I'm sorry. It's Stephen Artest, but it's Hot Shot Welding. Hot Shot Welding down in Florida. Um, he called me up and said, uh, hey, you uh, going out to California? I said, like, no, man. I said, I can't. First off, I couldn't afford it. I have my grandmother to take, I take care of as well. And then he says, first, if, first and foremost, I could not afford it, you know. Um, he said, well, you're a good guy, man, and you've been doing really well this year. And I know you're taking care of your grandma, and your life's changed from what it has been. And, it's, oh, man, it has. Um, he says, I'm going to buy you a ticket. I said, what? So and he was also the guy that was going to take my spot driving. So not only did he not drive the sidecar that I race now, um, and he's never been out to Laguna Seca. That's number two. But financed me a plane ticket and also gave me some pocket cash along the way. So, I mean, I go get to your right now talking about him. I mean, what a what a man, dude. That lifeline friend right there, buddy. And there's a few other people. You know, all know who you are. I mean, the Arma racer fan, just the racers. Not, it's not just Arma. I mean, the whole racer family that I have is stupid strong, man. And I love all of you. And you all know who you are. I, I tell him so much, man. Uh, and, man, I didn't drink on the flight. I was like, I was there to do a job. You know, I was so excited. And people could see, like, the sparkle in my eye and from airport to airport. And they'd hear my story and just, you know, want to get pictures and stuff. Like, I'm just the guy going out there trying to – I didn't think I was even on podium, man, you know. I'm out there with, you know, Bernard. Bernard's like um, – the chief engineer, you cannot call him a mechanic or anything like that, but chief engineer, like he's the head mofo for Jay Leno, you know, and Kevin Starr and Wade Boyd. Wade Boyd, I think he's been raced at Isle of Man 18 times. That's just, that's my competition. Unlimited funds, is Isle of Man racer, like, <laughs> woo! <laughs> Bill, Bill Wilmeroff, you know, uh, he's on the F1. That was my former driver who I've been with for the past four years. I mean, stupid, stupid competition, you know, and, Got this. Two of them, actually, Saturday and Sunday. Congratulations, my man. Yep, yep. And I actually taught, taught a, I was part of a sidecar school, so I was a coach and took a student out on the track, you know. And uh, I was, you know, it's, it's a whole different ball game being a passionate because I'm just like, woo, and I trust, I trust the Bill and I trust the Peter. Um, but this time, it's not just me. Now I'm in my rear view. I'm seeing if he's in the same spot, and I can – I can feel them. I can kind of look back and see his head right here, you know. So I'm waiting for him to get fully trans transitioned over, you know. So it's a, there's a lot more going on, and I gotta. I'm bringing that dude home, you know. You come out with me, I'm bringing you home, but we're not gonna go slow. <laughs> um, so it's a whole different uh, level of responsibility. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I, I, and and you know what's crazy and. Uh oh. We lost him. 
Hang on, ladies and gentlemen. He'll be back here in a second. How's everybody else's day been going on? Let's see what's going on here. Oh, he's back. I hear him. Sorry about that, guys. So, oh, you're, oh, you're good. So, Friday, we didn't get that much practice. I only got about about six laps of practicing before a race. If no, I think we got like, yeah, maybe three or four laps in them. Because the most of the Friday was with students, so me and Johnny didn't get out to go go actually push, you know. And as you as you go faster and faster, your time your lines kind of change, especially on the side car, and especially your timing, and just becoming Johnny never been on the track that track ever, and I've been on it, but as a passenger, but that that is not being a passenger. The only thing that transfers over is like okay, you know, there's a hill coming up there, there's a corkscrew. Like as far as driving the machine, there's there's nothing, so it's all brand new territory. And I was having issues, you know, and, you know, Bill come and talk to me and Kevin. Um, uh, there's another Johnny, uh, John, we call him, we got Johnny Florida, my guy, and then Johnny California. I think it's Johnny, uh, Johnny Crown and Johnny Glover. Sat down, man. We we were at nighttime and having dinner, and I'm like, well, I'm, it's pushing on me, you know, I'm getting a water, like it's pogo, and, you know, and he saw how we were riding and got Johnny up on there. We're back on the on the rig, and he said, "Lean more forward and get your foot from back from here and put it up in here." And, you know, jo- Johnny's a he's a national cha- multi national champion, and so am I. And we did that and went out for the practice the next time, and it was a little wet. And I'm joined, uh, you know, Damon and uh, Frank had uh, got that Toyo tire. They wanted me to drive it because I I tested tires the Avons out at uh, Talladega, a little tally. Hey, man, Saturday was good. Sunday, those tires were garbage. I was sideways at every turn, man. I was like, woo, it was fun, though. So I have a, I have a feel for the car now. So I go out there, and there's moisture on the chat, track, and I'm like, and everybody's like, how, how are the tires? I'm like, I'm going to go out there, let you guys go ahead, and I want to show you that I couldn't get them to break loose, you know? So we go out there, and I come back in. I was like, that's the fastest we've been all weekend, but this is, this is practice. This is Saturday, Saturday practice. And we come back in, we, yep, we dropped like three or four seconds, you know, like, and that's how, that's how I tested the tires for the guys. <laughs> love it, man. I love it. So let me, let me ask you this, Dustin, how, how different is, because those don't have suspension on them, right? So. Oh, no, they, they've got suspension for sure. They, they do? Yep. Yep. Look. So we've got motor, it's actually their, their motorcycle. So you'll have uh, a bunch of rear shocks, basically. Okay. <laughs> So, and you can uh, you can play with the ride height and you know um, compression and rebound all that stuff. Uh, we didn't mess with. I don't even think we messed with tire pressures all that much, man. We just went out and sent it. You know, we could have, but it was uh, everything felt right, especially when we got it to turn. I think it was uh, let's see, uh, three coming around four going up towards the uh, the Michelin Bridge up mm-hmm. at Laguna. As man, what a beautiful track. It is. It's a absolutely. I've been there in 2005. I haven't been back since, but yeah, it's absolutely a gorgeous track. And then Frank <laughs> says, "You're welcome for the Toyo tires." Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Yep, yeah, that's the gentleman. He's he's uh, he's the uh, like he's the team manager. You know, he comes in. He also teaches the sidecar racing school. Says, "You guys, any want to be a passenger or a driver one day? Contact me. I'll get you in contact with Frank." But Frank's our coach, man. He's very good at it. Very good at it. So nice. it's, uh, it's been an awesome man. It's been an awesome ride, and I appreciate all the, all these guys so much. I love it, man. I love it. I love the commodity and the people in our sport. Simply amazing. Uh, the the so best have, people, humans on our planet. Yes, Rachel. And you no, know, I have my grandmother and a couple other family members that are you know I have. But other than that, I don't have anybody else. When I lose those guys, the racer family is all I have. It's all I have. It's you guys. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, my life is life. I say life is life. But That's it. Life is life. Your family. <laughs> right. Um, so let me, how is it different? Is it a lot different setting up a sidecar than it is a solo bike? Oh, yeah. I mean, so let's see how already going in. This. <laughs> it is so much work, I think, for like. I wanted, hey Frank, t- uh, chime in here, buddy. Uh, what is it? Uh, for every hour on the track, it's like two or three hours. If uh, Peter Essif is here, you know, they, uh, Peter Essif is always like, it's always the passenger's fault. You know, getting into the sport, the passenger's got to do everything. You clean the bike, you load the bike. I mean, I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. I'll start out with Peter, you know. <laughs> it is so much work, man. 
Um, and you have to you have to trust your passion. You have to trust your driver. You know, you got to talk about it before the race. You know, and as far as like you'll come in, like you'll have, you know, how you get the little rolled up marbles on your race slicks and stuff. Well, you pick up everybody's, and now your tire's not this big. It's this big, and you got three of them. So it picks up everything, the gravel, your vacuum, and stuff. I mean, you'll come in, and it's like a, you've got Pebble Beach, or you've got, like, your own <laughs> your own runoff in the, your belly tray. You know, it's just gravel. Like, you gained, like, 15 pounds <laughs> coming off track, man. Um, and then the tire pressure, you know, the tires, they fluctuate as well. So, uh and then you just got communication, you know? So, I mean, the, the number one bike set up on a sidecar is your passenger and yourself, you know? You guys got to talk about it and say, okay, I'm having trouble here. I'm having trouble there, and, you know? And God forbid, you know, so let's say you uh, you blow, like, Frank out in California. He come down, it's coming right off the corkscrew, man. Thank God it didn't happen right there, but he had a, uh, a piece of the frame, the whole the rear subsection, it, it broke in half. Doing that through the tire forward, that through the chain forward, that got bunched up, cracked the, uh, the, uh, the Suzuki's have a, a rod that goes through. It split that rod for the clutch in half. It took the uh, pickup crew for forever trying to get it off, you know. And, okay, so just to get to that, you've got to take the body off, you know. I mean, the body, there's some of these have two parts of the body, so you got to get that off, and then you got to access this, and then you got to jack it up. Well, you don't have front and rear stands. You have to um, jack up certain jack points and kind of, get the whole bike up in the air i mean it's it's a process um but we love every minute of it you know but it's there you are it's 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 a car that goes as fast as a motorcycle <laughs> love it he said it's a car it's a two passenger car with no windows no doors it's funny, a guy uh, one of the uh one of the guys on the uh, award ceremony at uh, arma i forgot his name but he calls them speed missiles i was like that is that's it that's what they are they're speed missiles <laughs> I love it. Speed missiles. So, uh, Brandy says, uh, happy birthday again. Yes, it is Dustin's birthday. We're celebrating you, the legend himself. Birthday is 44 today. Filling God. 23. I am. <laughs> That's right. That's Me so too. Cool. In my mind. Right. I absolutely. Oh. I am. Well, I'm not 23 anymore. Ask me how I know. How do you know? So I guess I fractured a, uh, a rib while I was out. In uh, California, I guess it's coming off the corkscrew, and I break Johnny. If you're on here, man, <laughs> you're the man. I break, I break this thing. Well, I, I hammer down on the brakes like I'm road racing sometimes, and sometimes I forget, you know, because I'm in the zone, and you can't, you can, because Johnny holds on. But God forbid if anybody else is on that thing, man, that'd be going, you know. <laughs> um, so I guess under my braking and him, uh, you know, whatever corner it was in, he'd have to be a right hand corner. The pressure of his weight. And in the brakes, you know, I have a, my suit and a, a chest pad in. Um, I fractured a rib. So, long story short, I didn't go to the hospital or anything. I, I toughed it out. And it, each week, it got worse and worse and worse. So I guess it's, it's like, I forgot what it's called, but it's an inflammation around the rib with fluid. It started to hurt. I was like, am I having a heart attack? You know, am I having a heart attack? And it went from up here to down here and then everywhere. So now it all hurts. And it got to the point where I couldn't even breathe. I couldn't turn my head. I couldn't even, if I wouldn't turn my steering wheel, ah! You know, I mean, major pain. So that that pleurisy, that's right, pleurisy. Uh, so pleurisy will make you sound like a. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's been interesting, man. But yeah, major pain, bud. That's uh, yeah, I couldn't imagine. Never cracked a rib, um, uh, but I could imagine it. Freaking absolutely think- hurts. <laughs> I finally get that full breath, man. But it got to the point where I couldn't, like, I couldn't. I was like, ow, 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 you know, like, driving like this. Ow, ow, ow. It turned yeah. my damn steering wheel, man. Like, stupid. I, I do, man. You, I, you want to go racing? Like, yeah. Do, yeah, do absolutely I do. Yeah, 100% I'm going racing for sure. So, listen, man, we got Peter in the house. He's an absolute legend. I had him on my podcast. Oh. Everybody, P- Peter S. off, race to Isle of Man, TT, all that. It's my you guys had, yeah, dude, and if you guys haven't had a chance, go back to my Spotify on my YouTube channel. Watch his podcast; it's absolutely amazing, and there will be a part two coming. Yes, Peter, we need to schedule another one. Um, and then Frank let's, says, let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Yeah, dude, Frank, if you want to join, uh, shoot me a message on Messenger, and I'll send you the link, and we we'll just bring you straight in. 
Yeah, um, bring Frank, bring uh, bring Peter Estefan. Bring yeah, those are yeah. Those. I mean, if Frank if Frank wants to come in, it, yeah. Frank, I don't I don't have your info, but uh, Dustin Peter. does. Uh, yeah, if, if Peter wants to join, he can join. If Frank wants to join, you can send Frank the link, and I, I'll bring him in the studio too. But Frank yeah, says cool. for 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 every one hour, if if a rider is eight hours of maintenance, that's a lot. And then he said the bolt broke when you was talking about uh, the frame. And then he says, by the way, I got the water pump in today. I'm coming to install it. I'm the, I'm the tech. Yeah. And he says, you need a smaller monkey. No, 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 no. Yeah. And you, <laughs> how many more seconds do you want me to gap you out? <laughs> <laughs> I love uh, it. I, no, hats off to Frank, man. Frank is fast. Uh, down in Talladega. When I tell you, um, we were sideways on Sunday, man. I kept, I would look back and I cannot. I couldn't, I couldn't get get out from him, man. He was on me, like I mean, on me. <laughs> so I thought I was gonna be able to like take off and you know, kind of play around a little bit. No, it was a race. So that's awesome, man. So uh, you you've been to Laguna Seca. You, you said that previously, right? Uh, on on a solo motorcycle. So how much different was it the experience being in the side? No, I never I never did Laguna on uh, okay. two wheels. Not yet, not yet. Um. I just saw real with Peter Estep out there. Okay, yep. okay. Yep, yep. Soon. Peter said, where's Johnny? <laughs> where's Johnny? Where is <laughs> Johnny? Me, buddy. I've been calling him trying to figure out. We got this race coming up in two weeks. I don't know what's going on. There's a bunch of politics going on between. I'm not going to. Wait, he needs to call Frank. If, tell Johnny to call Frank, and then right after Frank, call me. <laughs> We're actually in the points. We could be, if we were to do uh, the race in two weeks, we'd be in the points. Be leading the points my first year driving in F2. Nice. However, I can't get a hold of Johnny. So I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Johnny, where are you, Johnny? So hang on. Let me, let me, we'll keep talking. I'm going to send um, Frank an invite. He sent me his email. So let me. Uh, so tell us some more. Uh, about the week game in Laguna Seca, you showed up Friday. What was it Friday, the beginning of the? No, yeah, it was actually Thursday night. That third Thursday night, I actually got to fly into to Monterey. I'm very we uh. So when I met Peter and flew out there, we met uh Matt. Matt Collier is the track manager of Laguna Seca. Very good friend of mine now. I actually took Matt Matt out on uh Saturday, or actually Sunday. Saturday or Sunday, he went out with me. So I took the track manager out on the sidecar with me and driving. And it's just been, we've evolved into um, a business relationship to a very, very close friendship. So Matt Collier, Laguna Seca track manager, is absolutely amazing. Best hospitality you could ever ask for. So it's, uh, it's been epic, man. It's been epic. It's been proper mega. That's what I always it's say. Proper Dustin. mega. Proper, proper mega. mega. That's it, man. Absolutely proper mega. And the so, people, so people, I mean, you've heard the story with, uh, with, you know, with Peter, you know, we've, the people that you meet racing these things, you, you can't make it up. I mean, we hung out with Barry Weiss a couple of years ago at Barber. That's Storage Wars guys, you know. You know, like we, his wife had to kick Barry Weiss out of the RV. It's funny. It's just, <laughs> That's hilarious. So it just, and I mean, we went to Hills Angels and stuff. I mean, just it's, it's, the stories go on and on and on and on. And it brings such an amazing smile on people's faces. You know, I gave my one of my awards was a hat at Black Hawk Farms a couple years ago as well. You know, and this guy rode in on his BMW and his mom in the sidecar. You know, and I got off. They loved us, you know, and then I took my, my hat off and signed it to her. And Peter signed it to her and gave it to her. And, you know, that's a fan for life. They're like, well, yeah, you come this year, you come this year, you know, just stuff like that. You know, it's just, it makes people smile. It, it, it Absolutely. It does. And it makes them even more bigger of a fans. Right. And then they enjoy coming because now they feel they're part of something, which is Man, absolutely I was dragging amazing. my helmet and doing the scorpion and Peter and Ann were like, Ugh. and then we get out, we get done racing and like the, all the fans come up. Oh, you guys, you guys! Oh my God, it was amazing! You know, you're nuts. You know? uh, I love it. Uh, and then it was just cool. It's, it, it's cool. Yeah. We're very approachable. We're very approachable. We're, we're nice. We're just racers, man. The other That's people it. were like pop stars or something, but you know, we're just having the time of our life. That's what it's, it's about. 
Uh, Frank, I sent you an email, so check and confirm to make sure you got it. Uh, you got Your laptop's got to have a, a Google Chrome on it if you use a laptop, or you could use your cell phone. So you just click on the link. It'll bring you directly in the studio, and I'll accept your invite. Boom, you'll be in. You'll be got on the podcast. 87-year-old grandma is still driving my truck. She brings it back with this and scrapes some thumbs on. I got a phone call not too long ago. It was a police officer. Said, uh, uh, your grandma is, uh, she didn't stop for about two miles. <laughs> She's like, yeah, go to her doctor's appointment. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I, I thought it was DUI because she was uh, swerving in between lanes. So I turned my camera on. She ran three cars off the road a little bit. Um, pulled her over. Does she, your grandma drink? I'm like, no, sir. She just. She's old. <laughs> so, That's uh, hilarious. I, I got a, a kind of similar story, and I never told this before on my podcast. So I had an aunt. She um, she was schizophrenic. She had a couple different personalities. Well, when I was in high school, she used to let me borrow her truck, right? And then she would forget that she let me borrow her truck and call the police saying somebody stole a truck. Right. So they pulled me over. Oh, your aunt just called, said you stole the truck. I was like, bro, I'm her nephew. I, I, she just let me borrow the truck. Right. So after 15 times of her doing it, they would, of course, they'd have to pull me over. And then they're like, you're good. We just want to make sure it's you. She called again. I said, I figured. So yeah, it's, uh, but I loved her to death. And look who we got in. Frank, up, Frank? welcome to Pin to Gas. How you doing? What's up, guys? Come say hi. Let me see if I can get my grandma to say hi real quick, guys. Hey, yeah, what's bring up, her on in. Oh, here she is. How you doing? I think that's what the grandma one time. I think it was a tap. Here she is. I found it for your mom. Here she is. You're talking to Chris and Frank. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi. I'm doing good. How are you? I'm pretty good. Couldn't be no woman, man. <laughs> she, she comes out. Finally, got the Harley started up the other night. She's like, "That that sounds good." And then, we uh I painted the exhaust and took this out. So this is kind of a wild little color. It's a ceramic coating. Nice. Yeah, I think it's too much orange, so yeah. I told you I want to keep you on it. Anybody want to say hi? No, I haven't. Well we'll talk about that later. We'll go back later. That's all we'll get a few more minutes on this and we'll go okay, we'll go check on them again. Okay, baby. I think grandma's got a boyfriend. Uh uh uh. Uh oh, <laughs> his name's Outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> he's a good friend of mine, though. Good, he's good people. I love it. Good man. I'm happy for everybody. Needs to be uh, happy for sure. Hundred percent. What's so, up, Frank? Yeah, dude. How, how did how did Frank and, and you two meet? How, how how did that happen? Well, we we know each other for a while. I, I I he from Daytona. I mean, he actually. Uh, when he ran the Daytona 200 at that time, he used one of my uh, garages to do the track. If you remember, that was a catcher for him on his uh, yeah. Daytona. He was, I think he, he, was, did, he was on my crew. Right? I was a catcher. Um, I, I wear a helmet, so in case he uh, missed the break, I won't break my head. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Uh, he knows I know I'm a wild one. Yeah. Several years now. I also, awesome. Frank. So I used to be like I wanted to be the flashiest guy, you know, the brightest colors. And Frank, I mean, you know, this is a CCS Azure days, you know. Um, and this guy right here, man, <laughs> he's always doing it up, you know. So it's cool. It's cool. So two wheels, man, two wheels, and then we end up getting in the sidecars. Yeah. And then he links up with Damon and. You know, I planned on being over there working with those guys right now. You know, if my mom hadn't passed away, I'd be with these guys right now instead of working at the airport. Yeah, so yeah, aviation and Mid South Aviation. Um, but yeah, my, my Dustin, goal was to be with these guys right now. Dustin is the one that got me into the sidecar crack addict type thing. You know, <laughs> we, we started with I, one. I we slipped had, in the sidecar one, pill. <laughs> we started with one sidecar. We're up to seven now. So Nice. Uh, yeah. I was telling him about you uh, on Sunday at Tally. Oh, I was rubbing, paying, brushing, you know, rubbing, scraping, and and and, and dragging, oh, everything. I told him I, I kept looking back. I'm like, he's he's right there. He's right there. Getting no oh, breathing. Oh, oh, Tally. Yeah, but that's because you wanted to break the the track record, so we were 2.5 seconds behind. Yep. 
So I was. I was, a, only, I was, I was less than two people. seconds away from Peter Estes. My first time ever driving a sidecar ever. Yeah. And, and I said, uh, we, no, you, you know, we were thirty seconds from third place. <laughs> we disappeared, and then we were thirty seconds ahead of uh, third place. Me, Frank, and then thirty seconds later, third place. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So Frank, how long have how long have you been racing sidecars? I've been racing sidecar for uh, maybe a year. Uh, that, a little bit longer than that. Yeah, almost two now. You know, I was uh, I raced uh, the only TT uh, one F one sidecar six hundred, uh, which is not the same as the F two. It's a it's a F two is eight feet long by five feet wide. Mine's eleven and a half feet long by. Uh, Five feet wide. Um, the engine is on the back. Um, on on Dustin uh, one thousand, is the engine is on the front. Yeah, I'm and a shorter Dustin, chassis. Yeah, Dustin sidecar. I'm an F1 feet. guy though. Don't give me. I'm I'm an F1 guy. Yeah. Um, he 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 started in uh, as a passenger for several years, and uh, when he came his time, we we. Let him use the uh, the F2. There's only three in the United States of those F2s, uh, 1,000. Uh, I think uh, Bill Becker has one, and Wade has the other one, and then you. Uh, awesome, right? These guys, out of anybody they could choose, they they choose this guy, and they all. It was crazy because they talk about it, and they're all sitting down, and Damon and Johnny, they're like, they are all like, like almost at the same time. What about Dustin? You know, I was like, oh, it. yes, he <laughs> earned the, the yes. right. Uh, to race it because he's been he knows I know he's very good at two wheel racing and he knows very well tracks uh apex you know negative positive cameras and stuff like that and he's not afraid of speed so uh and he he knows sidecar from being a passenger so he knows what to do I mean we just don't pick him because he will just you know uh, I wouldn't give a one thousand to anybody uh unless they have several years of racing Dustin earned his right to erase that 1,000 on my app. Thank you guys. Yeah, still, same thing, man. I'll get to you. I thank you guys so much, man. Like, I, I feel blessed, dude. I really do. You are. Yeah, absolutely you are. 100%. Uh, oh, we lost I, I him. Here it. he is. Again. <laughs> good stuff, though. It's real good stuff. It, it, it is. It I, is. I, I take it. It's. I, it means so much to me. Being out there on that track, it's like it's just my happy place, man. Oh, we're like, gonna do bar with Barber is coming, and then Daytona. Um, what is Daytona in October? Hey, October. Uh, it's the third week. I got it right here. So we Barber got, is the tenth to thirteenth. It's the following yeah. weekend. So at we, at we, Yeah, we got Barber coming in the mid of October, and then right after. We're just gonna just drive to Daytona because we gotta be there by Wednesday. So what a cool uh what's it called? We got a bunch of cars together and stuff. Uh you know what's the word I'm looking for here, guys? Fast and the Furious. No, it's like you know, you all your hollers like NASCAR, you got all the Oh yeah, uh Convoy. Yeah, convoy, there you go. Uh, yeah, I had a brain fart too. I was like, Yeah, well, what is that? <laughs> uh so Jeff Dixon says, Happy birthday, the Dustin Racing. That's yeah. right. What's up, Jeff? Jeff's sidecar racer, too. I've ridden uh, with Jeff many a times. He's nice. not only just a sidecar racer, he's a personal friend. And I tell you right now, Jeff Dixon has the best, the best pickles in the world. Oh, dude, I'm a pickle person, Jeff. You have, I've, been you telling have to hook me up. I've been telling him to put it on the market. I've yes. All across the country, same thing with Jeff. Hey, which, hey, taste this pickle. Would you, they're like, oh, my God. Amazing I love pickles. I yeah. love hot and spicy pickles. Dude, I wow. dude, I've I have Clawson, sweet jerkins, dill, um, you <laughs> uh you name it. Uh bread and butter, you name it. I used to have them all. And if I have money, uh, my fridge is stacked with all of them. Jeff's pickles are the best. Well, I, I need some, Jeff. And listen, we got the another legend in the house, my man Darren Rodriguez. What's up, uh, Darren? Everybody knows Darren. He he's Envy yeah, Race Leather Envy, Suit, that's, that's, yeah. which is absolutely amazing brand. Um, so dude, uh, we got Ella Dreyer and Avery Dreyer. Well, hey, what's up, guys? A, a bunch of them, but right. yeah, it's um, yeah, Darren's absolutely mega. So you guys stay tuned. 
Yeah. And then uh, we got Miguel Trina. What is up, Miguel? What's he up, says, Miguel? happy I birthday. Have, I haven't seen Miguel in forever. Yeah, Miguel's awesome. I need to. Did we lose Frank? Yeah, yeah, we lost Frank. I'll see it. He'll click back in. It's easy. Just just Frank. I know you're listening. Just click on the 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 link I sent you. There you go. Bring him right back in and then add to stage. <laughs> now he's back. Miguel came because he saw my name and he ran into it. <laughs> and then yeah, Jeff, me and, Miguel, me and Miguel go years. I mean, back to uh, maybe 2005. Wow. Me and, Miguel, me and Miguel started. I've been racing for probably 17, 18 years. But me and Miguel were the founders of the spec class for AMA for the uh, 250s back in, I think it's 2010, 2011. And then when you yeah. was a uh, Motec or whatever, Mo was, was Moraki. I was the founder um, or part owner of the Moltrack motorcycles. Also, that, that we won the championship back in uh, 12 hours of Bushna against the uh, all major Japanese uh, brands. Uh, we 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 rode with uh, um, what's his name, uh, uh, John Dylan Kelly. I think it was like 14, 15 years back, back in 2017, and then. Uh, Pirino was part of the team, and then we ran the, uh, I think it was the 12 hours or the 24 hours uh, with the Michael Carrera uh, on the mini GP back in Bushnell. So, speaking of uh, Sean, we got my man here. I want Sean on the podcast. We got to get him on here for him. I do. Well, dude, I talked to Sean in um, at Mid Ohio, and uh, yeah, he said he'll come on the podcast. So, um, I need oh, to actually. I can't um, remember. If, I, actually, I think he gave me his personal phone number. Cool. I'll, I'll Let me get check. Him, get him online for you. We used to be neighbors. SDK. Yes, I got his number. I should call his ass right now. Yeah, what up, right. SDK? Call him. Try it. Let's do it. Uh, Let's do it. That'd be awesome. <laughs> he he won't recognize my number. He's like, who the hell is this calling? I, I, I'll shoot yeah, him. Yeah, I can arrange it if you want. Yeah, absolutely, dude. I'd love to have um, him on. Uh, absolutely, very, 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 good, very good kid. Very responsible. Very, very good kid. He is. He he's a he's a legend, just like Dustin, just like you, Frank. Oh no, I'm like the same Miguel. way. Oh. No, no, I'm very proud. Yeah, I'm very proud. Nothing to very proud. Hats off that kid. Man, he's a young man now. Yeah, yeah he, he is. is. So he's twenty now. Yep. Yeah, 21, I think, or 22, something. He's young, yeah. yeah. That, that's called living the dream right there, buddy. Yes, it is. And and he is Argentinian, if I'm not mistaken. He's Argentinian. Well, he was, I think he was born here. Parents are Argentinian. Okay, but, uh, All right. And then he got an Irish last name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, it's like Leland Kelly. You know, Kelly is an Irish name, so... I don't know where they got to all that. <laughs> That's awesome. And Miguel says it, it's been a bit great to see you guys out there having fun. Oh, he's dying to jump on the passenger stuff. Oh, come Dude. on, Miguel. Come on, buddy. Dude, I want to get in the passenger. I'm trying to go. Peter Peter told me that uh, when I show up, he'll uh, yeah, he'll put me on, and I'd love to go for so, a ride around. Barbara, it is. So. Okay. No, don't, forget to, don't, don't forget to breathe. That's all. Yep. <laughs> And, and then we got always a positive hand. You never, never let go. I you never always have one of these locked. I got the kung fu death grip on that bitch. Trust me. Yeah, no, but my 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 uh, passenger have at the beginning had blister because she would not let go of that thing, and she had blister right through the through the gloves. She would not let go of the handle. Oh, I can only imagine for sure. And then Rick Hint says, "What's up, Dustin? Tell him about our crazy street riding back in the day." Okay. So you guys know who Rick is, right? Rick's picks. Yep. Okay. Yeah, he's a uh, here too. So, yeah. uh -huh. Rick is here too. He used to uh, take our pictures and then ask him about the bus ride to Bush. <laughs> <laughs> well, say it again. So the boss ride at Bush. That, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you guys. So back before I started racing, I was a street squid. I called myself the street assassin. We didn't. We didn't, we, we didn't cruise. We fucking sent it. I'm talking about in South. Like, what happens if you get pulled over? Pulled over. <laughs> okay. Yeah, what are you talking about? Yeah. Well, you what, what, what's that? I'm talking about wide 160 as fast as these bikes would fucking go. And we do it every day, all night long. I mean, just it's sending it constantly. We're lucky to be here, Rick. 
Straight yeah. up, buddy. We are so lucky to be here. Yeah, me too. I was a I was a squid too myself. Ran from the police more times than uh, they used. To, I'll put it to you like this: something else I never talked about. I, I my name was so known in Body Talk here in Virginia that when any motorcycle ran from the police, they'd bring a search warrant to my parents' house and knock on the door just to see if I was home. <laughs> make them open up the garage door, make sure my bike was there and I was there. Yeah, it was is okay, uh, that's profiling, <laughs> bro, dude. I was I was I was I was that goon full. Just like what you said, 140, 150, whatever it would go, bam, this yeah. is it. They pull up beside me, cut on the lights. I just laugh at him, give him the bird, ride a wheelie, and just be be out. See ya. I mean, there used to be a bike club down there. I forgot what the name of it was. But they used to tell me, like, you, you, they wouldn't be, I was just hanging around and stuff. I have, I, I'm like, I'm a free rider. I'm a free rider. I'm not a prospect, you know. They try to tell me where I can ride. I said, until you're faster than me, you don't tell me where I can ride. I got to ride in the back of the pack, you know. Like, <laughs> who the fuck are you? <laughs> Yeah, I never joined no club. I, no. I'm not. Uh... But they did have, dude, we went to some clubs and stuff, and it was like full VIP. I mean, I get it. It was kind of cool. It was kind of it was kind of cool, but I'm not going to be told. I'm not going to push your bike. I'm not going to wash your bike. I'm not going to get you a drink. And you're not going to tell me where I ride up in the pack. Nope. <laughs> I'd pull up. They had the roundabouts. I'd go around these roundabouts, and I'd get off. And I used to wear, like, my, door, my I had, like, dirt bike pants, you know, and the just the out like the it's in the chest protectors and stuff. And I'm I'd be mooning these guys and they'd be all coming around and I'd just pull out mooning them. <laughs> I'm lucky I didn't get my ass beat so many times. Uh Frank, did you ever do any crazy stuff like that on the street? I did. I mean, uh I got stopped a couple of times by this particular trooper down going down the keys when I used to live in Florida. No. Uh, he he busted me for everything, you know, because I had it modified. I think it was like a, a 750 Ace, you know, cruiser type thing. Then uh, I got into the Ducatis and and uh, speed bikes and stuff like that. I remember drove from Florida to the Turnpike doing probably 140, 150 average. I had to stop on every other service station because I was eating the gas of the of the 48. Uh, Ducati, uh, all the way to uh, Ocala, and then my wife at that time, because uh, you know uh, I don't feel good, so I had to drive back, uh, ride back the same speed, you know, going down you know, turnpike. I actually fall asleep and change lane without noticing it, about 140 miles an hour, uh, <laughs> you know. But after 2011. Uh, I got in an accident. I was on a red light. Somebody was on the phone, hit me on the back, and never again rode on the street after that. So it's all been back after 2011. I can't, I can't ride on the street. Anymore. Yeah, I, I man, I'm going to try this Harley. I'm going to try it. You know, I mean, no, I, I can't. I got airbags on it. I got airbag shocks on it. Um, uh, it had spoke rims. We machined out the, uh, the mag, the 21 smoke mag wheel. So, I mean, there's a lot of fab going into it. I'm planning on flipping it. I'm kind of thinking like the uh, Yamaha MT-09. It's supposed to be coming out in 2025 with like the R1, R6 body work on it. Yeah. You know, it should be naked. It's supposed to be a full body. I'm like, cool. But, you know, why not? You know, I'm not going to go out here and rip. Definitely not running from anybody in Alabama. You know, every corner's got uh, pine needles, some dirt. Um, they'll look right at you and pull them right out in front of you. This is my tradition. Like, you don't – this is just like cruising. You know, like I'm old now. God. You're not old, man. Come oh. on, man. Get out <laughs> of here I, with I, that. Cruise, you know, I just want to check out this, like the the mountains. Like, there's so many big mountains. I mean, it's beautiful, man. So I want to give it a shot. I uh, if not, I, we can get another race bike. No. The right? cycle. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this. Let me ask you guys this. Those that are are going to be listening to this and, and watching this, what if they wanted to get in the sidecars? What do they got to look for? Where do they go? Who do they talk to? And what's the cost in getting one, Frank? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm the unofficial uh, instructor for ARM, and it's the only one that can certify you to a class. The, I got put on this position because of Mr. Dale Lavender retired after 18 years of uh, showing the class. I have. Uh, an extensive background on coaching and training people uh, as an instructor for uh, LTD, 
Legacy Track Days racing. CJ Cohen. Yep. Yeah, well, CJ Cohen, which is an AMA certified track day. So I was put on that position. Uh, and I've been teaching the, the schools since uh, Tally. Uh, I think the biggest classroom we have was at uh, Laguna. At, uh, Laguna Seca. We have six, five passengers and two riders. And we were expecting uh, one rider and two passengers. Uh, so Dustin had to take a point. <laughs> yes. No, I know, loved uh, it. I was, I was filming him. I was telling uh, Chris about it. It was early, early in the podcast when we hopped on, but yeah, we, we were talking about that. Yeah. So, uh, uh, but it, it's not for everybody. I can tell you that much. Uh, uh, you have to be uh, physically, uh, your upper body has to be physically trained. You know, you have to have some either or, either chip, either the rider or the passenger needs to have some background uh, racing motorcycle. You just can't jump in into this thing. Uh, it, it is very low, very fast. We pulled up to three Gs in some corners. So if you don't have the upper strength, uh, you would you you have to work with the G forces of the car. And if you don't have, if you go against it, you're gonna get tired within three laps. You're not going to make it to the fourth. You can't line. fight it. You can't fight the process. Yes, you you have to know about tracks. You know how to, you have to know about apex. You know you have to know to be in position before you jump into the turn. For and example, if it's a, it's a, so like on a motorcycle, you know, you'll come in, you'll put your elbow, you put your head down, you lean into the corner, right, hanging off the back, you know, push the, you know, feel the stepping out, push the bike up away from you. On the sidecar, as a passenger and stuff, and the driver is it's you're waiting for that, so. If you try to come in, it's a sweeping corner, right? And it's going to be a tight left hander coming up. And you're trying to fight those G's to come up on that. Three laps, you're done. You wait till right before there's a timing. Right before it goes left, it, the, it you just it, the chair puts you where you want to be. And it's like effortless. But that's the, what the skill set the goes The responsibility in. of the passenger is to, if it's a left, if it's a left there, side car like the modern cars is to protect the chair so we need the weight on the left side more than that we need it on the right side on the right side we're there the motor is there we got two tires and then we have the uh that, that's the, not third, the third wheel the third wheel to make the right turn but we depend uh that's the the main concern of the uh, passenger to protect where the chair side is to give us a counterweight. Otherwise, we'll flip the car. Till yeah. Whatever it is, it's going to fly out and we get stuck under it. Um, yeah, so, yeah the, so the chair will lift up. If, you, if the person's not there or that person falls off. Lift. And, lift. Yeah. And it goes into a left hander. It won't steer. They usually go. I've seen passions fall off, and they do the best. It's like up, 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 and they just go straight off into the grass. If they're already committed to that turn or they have to turn, it's they're upside down. Yeah. So uh, to get into it, I mean, not to scare people. I mean, once you no, uh, yeah, yeah. You, at least you have the background knowledge of riding a motorcycle. It is a ex completely different experience of riding a car or a motorcycle. You're two and a half inches from the ground, going up to 140, 150 miles an hour, depending on what type of configuration you have. And, and, and it's a team effort. Uh, and, and, and it is truly two people job steering the sidecar. One person cannot do it by himself. Actually, the right cannot do it. Yeah, that's and, absolutely right. I just want to add to it when you get done. Yeah. Oh, the most we can do is the the, the car as straight as possible so we don't kill the passenger by overworking uh the upper arms and so necessarily kill yeah. tie them out <laughs> we try to like the chicane we take them as straight as possible uh uh Dustin knows firsthand uh the chicane atali how I take them uh I don't even look at as a chicane I look at a straight line everybody freaks out because when they see the video I don't even turn the wheel. It's just, you know, I'll go in. Point um, and shoot. He's pointing and shooting. That's why yeah. he's called Top Gun. Because he's got Top Gun. Well, that's, what my side car, that's what my side car looks like, an F-14. <laughs> that's my so, favorite but, jet. Uh, but when we add, yeah, to, this, when we add to this real quick, all, with the school, if you want to get into it, you can definitely have ARMA, but there's also going to be a, a, a race school in the future. You know, it's going to be an addition on it. You know, 
organizations have race schools, but they also have, you know, like the Yamaha school. Can I, can I, for example, I, I, we do, if, if when, we not, when we were at Mid-Ohio recently, which is run by uh, the AMA Vintage uh, Motorcycle Day, yeah, I, gave, I gave, on Sunday morning, I gave uh, a passenger that wanted to ride it. So I give her what is called an experience sidecar. Uh, ride that we take him around the track at 50% speed so they they can see and how he feels and stuff like that we don't even go not even close to 60% or 70% and and you know we we play with the with the vintage side cars so she knows the experience and stuff and if she likes it then you know if you're interested you got to look for an experienced uh sidecar the sidecar experience we have nothing to do with class and uh, we'll go through an introduction and then we'll go around one, you know, the four, three or four laps around the track, uh, one session of, of one day, and then that's it. If you like it, then you can proceed and schedule a right. class when available. Uh, um, the class, the class, we plan on having like the, you know, like the, the, the car be fixed. We'll have a backdrop, you know, with Frank's talk about having a projector. So you choose the track that you're going to be going to. You can automatically ride the track with the, the unit sitting still. I mean, there's so much that we plan on doing. Eventually, we be able to rent, go and rent the whole track to ourselves and have our own track day. You know, we have plans for this. Uh, Johnny, we're doing the whole reason we're doing the whole dolphin, dolphins themed sidecar is Johnny's been trying to get in with Formula One. We when we did Daytona, made history at Daytona, first time sidecars raced there on Moderns uh, a few years back. Uh, the Dolphins photographer came up, said, "Hey, gave him a card." Uh, Johnny, like like Peter said, where's Johnny? He's met Tom Garfinkel. Tom Garfinkel owns the Dolphins, you know. So we actually have, uh, we're supposed to be pit race, but I'm not sure what's going on with that whole ordeal. But we got uh, September 30th, I'm flying down there. We're supposed to have the Dolphin sidecar at Dolphin Stadium for the second time, you know, to see. And the whole reason for this is to get a foot in the door for Formula One. That's why I'm not a football fan. I'll tell you that right now. But uh, the number 15, his storyline kind of mimics mine like me racing two wheels my mom passed my way getting back into racing it's the same exact story but i'm a road racer he's a football player um so hopefully you know and let's say we get the opportunity to get into formula one we've changed the whole sport for americans in this whole we're the ogs to uh you know so i mean we're, there's a whole purpose behind everything that we're all doing and we all add so much to this but yeah, Wouldn't the, it be nice, Frank, yeah. if we get paid to do this? <laughs> no, the, the, idea, the idea of the uh, Miami Dolphins stuff is for the uh, Formula One when it runs down there. Uh, because they, they, they need uh, filling the pace or the time while they have all the spectators doing nothing because nothing is going idle, on. It's idle time. It, Side yeah. cars. <laughs> You know, they put side cars or maybe the motorcycle or an exhibition of this or that. So that's part of the, the, the thing, you know, to fill in spots or time on the track while the F1 side with the Formula One cars are not running. But that takes, uh, it takes one time. That's it. And we're this close, we're this close. You know, yeah, I don't, if you look at my birthday on my Facebook, it's the Dolphins Cancer. You know, if you look on the yeah. side car, it's the whole Dolphins Cancer Fund, you know. So it's a big, big picture here that nobody really knows the whole story on, but that's why. I love it. Well, good. It's going to happen. Y'all I mean, heard it here first. It's, it's going to happen. Now, guys, but how cool would that be? It would be a proper mega, as I always say, right? It would It would change the game for sure. It, it would change the game. Yep. Just for motorsport, just motorsports in America as a whole. I mean, that's just, man, it would be amazing. Well, but, back to your, your, your question about um, – the cost of it. Uh, I think that the passenger classes are running for like ninety-five or one hundred and five dollars per for the whole day, and for the rider uh, or the pilot, it's about three hundred and something uh, to get the class uh, it, it with arm. Uh, that's that's what the cost is to get the certificate. You get a uh, school certification. You don't get a race license to. To start raising it, but you get a um, if you don't have a, a license for arm, you can get the it's like when you take the classes for racing, you get a certificate 
and then you do your race the next weekend or the same weekend and then you you, you know you qualify for your license because you've been you you went to school so now you can get your license that's what uh, what it is right now it's a it's 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 a it's a stair step process and then if you want to get your license right. if you can't come off a car frank and damon they've got rentals so you can actually rent the rig come and we'll set you up the tire pressure is it's kind of a go ahead frank i'll go ahead and tell them about the rental program yeah no we we have few cars to rent uh that they mostly modern cars. We don't do the the vintage or the classics, um, and we rent them for for the weekend. Very inexpensive compared to a motorcycle, uh, between three to four hundred for for the weekend, depending on if it's uh, a long car or a short car, and and that includes uh, the gas and the transportation. Um, for the track and then, you know, I'm tired, but we also do the leasing part that, uh, that they can lease it for an extended time. So that car gets dedicated for that particular team. We do that too. Um, it's kind of like the, the set start to, deal back, you know, but for side cars. Yeah, we try to make it as easy as possible to get into the business. And, um, I know we have uh, some sites that we have, uh, if you're interested in buying one, we can point you to the side, or otherwise you got to buy them. We got people in the UK and in France that can facilitate Worldwide. bringing over a uh, few sale uh, side cars that are being sold right now, or they're selling right now in the Fran French, uh, France and uh, and in the UK. But the average car to bring in from over there, they can go from at 5,000 pounds to Fifty thousand pounds, depending yeah, on. Definitely. That's what I was about to say. Cars, you know, um, if it's metal or carbon fiber or monocoat, what they call it. Um, some of the side cars, you know, the frame probably weighs a hundred pounds because uh, yes. they're made out of carbon. Yeah. And, and when you get done racing, the, you retire, just put it on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Or you know, but. Uh, uh, you know, the cost is not much. The tires will last you for the whole season, more or less. Telling, uh, sorry, let me cut you off. But I was telling them about the, uh, the, the Toyo test. The yeah. I mean, we were trying because the Toyo uh, was one of the most inexpensive tires you can purchase at this moment. Super good. And they make, the correct, they make the correct size for the sidecar, which is 13 inches. And uh, the front wheel is uh, uh, seven to eight inches, and the back wheel is from nine and a half to 10 inches wide. It is, um, they're massive tires. Uh, they can outbreak any super bike uh, because you have three, three brake uh, rotors. Yeah. Uh, by just pressing one pedal, you hit the three rotors at the same time. Um, the Toyo tires, in this case, we raised the Toyo and we raised. Uh, Pushers tires. Um, the door tires uh, are wet and dry, while the Hoosiers are just plain slick. So. And the Toyos, uh, yeah, the Toyos have a it had a groove in it. But out in Cali, I was telling Chris, man, it was wet. And I, I said, "Watch this practice, Frank. <laughs> Watch this practice. I'm sending it." Stuff. I know they're, they're very sticky. They're, those tires are like uh, soft, a medium soft compact. So they're very sticky. And compared to a motorcycle tire, it's a flat tire. So you get the full nine inches or the full 10 inches gripping on the ground all the time. And they actually literally you use very little pressure uh, you know, between 15 to 16 pounds. That's it. Yeah. Compared to the motorcycle. I don't know. It's a, it's a science, I guess. You know, we're learning, um, and um, it, it changes. Every sidecar is different. Not two of the same. Um, my mind mine's a nineteen. I think it's a nineteen early nineteen nineties sidecar. Uh, the one that uh, uh, Dustin is riding is, I think, is a. Uh, 20, 20, 
2012 or 2018. I mean, I don't know, but it, that car was made for me because all the previous <laughs> drivers on this thing, man, it had nasty head shake. I mean, nap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah it's like uh, nothing with me. I've had no problem. I haven't even got there. I got a little bit of pogo in up in, uh, in Laguna. But other than that, man, this car is like, it was meant to be. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, I, I, I made some changes uh, on the suspension when I took it to NC Bike and it took all the head shake stuff. I I rode it in, uh, I raced it actually at uh, Mid Ohio. Uh, mine was too and from Laguna Seca. And it, I didn't have any uh, uh, head shake. And I was doing six gear full, uh, full throttle on it on the back end of uh, Mid Ohio, and, uh, which is a long straightaway. And, uh, and and I had no complaints about it. <laughs> What's up? I just I just got back from Mid Ohio. I was out there for the uh, Moto America race. It was my oh. first time there. Yeah. No. Nope. Okay. No. Nope. And, and uh, Frank, I like the hat, the SDK hat, man. I like yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, I got it. And, uh, I'm I'm very I'm very good promoter for uh, SDK. Whatever he needs. Uh, you know, I, I remember he came one time. Uh, one of the races at. Uh, he was running a, a racing a motor and he was sliding everywhere and he goes uh why are you sliding so much uh Dylan? so my tire is worn up so he goes, get, get it over there and, and here's the money for a new tire i mean i don't want you to kill yourself <laughs> that's me you know that's how i that's my new cat her name's princess she 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 came out of the blue tell me this cat's not beautiful it's a persian She's beauty. and what siamese persian She's so gorgeous, but she's still a named her princess because she's so needy. That's what my dog's name. I, I got my Frank. Do, do you have any animals? <laughs> uh, yes, I got a. There's a, my dog right a here. A pig with a French coat. <laughs> I love it. So it's actually a, it's a it's a French bulldog staff. What it's called? So it's a sixty pound. Uh, he's a big. He's a big uh, boy. <laughs> It'll tow, a, it'll tow a house with, with it behind. Pop. That's right. Pop. Here. Well, how, how, how big was the, uh, how big was Sam, my alligator, last time I was on here? How big was he? Who? You remember the gator? You know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> gator, man. Check him out. Oh, he's cute, Frank. Look. Oh, he, was, he, was oh, and he, he is adorable. He is adorable. Uh, Peter says Frank Dog was in timeout. <laughs> <laughs> he is, boy, he, was, he he owns the trailer. You won't go in my trailer or the or the truck if he's. Oh no, I'm not. Yeah, yeah. He, uh, the good guard dog. Look at this guy. I don't see if you guys can see him. You know, oh yeah, uh, I see him. Dustin and his alligator. Yeah, <laughs> I have a I have a cat someplace. I don't know. It, it looks like a big punch on the face. His whole face is flat. <laughs> yeah, he's my cat. Uh, I, we have two cats too, as well. Um, so yeah, it's uh, absolutely. And, and my buddy Andrew Davis said these guys are always a joy to be around in the Arma paddock. Thank you, thank you. Absolutely, man. This but, has been, dude. This hour went by super fast. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> Dude, it, it, it's what happens when we have fun. But listen, guys, I can't stay on here too much longer because it's family night. Dur well, hold week. on. I think we should. I got these mortars. I got these for uh, trespassers. I figured I'd light these off at people before I use the 12 cage. I think we should light one off. Light it off. My grandma's <laughs> going to have a heart attack, but it's okay. That's okay. Light it off. What yeah, color, guys? What color? Somebody give me a color. It, 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 somebody, it, it, uh, somebody's watching. Somebody give me a color. Okay, let's do this. Somebody pick out a color. There we go. What are those? Jeff Dixon said, do it. Jeff, what color? What color should he light? Andrew, what color? Jason Doss, what color? <laughs> Just make sure, it's, make sure it's no arm official close by. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> Stop, man. No, no. Start throwing, uh, what is it? Roman Blue. Cat, make sure they stand. Blue it is. There you go. Blue Dustin. it is. Okay. All right. Um, Frank, Great. me and you got to do a podcast. Okay. Anytime you want. It's fine. Long, it's a long story. What, what did you guys choose the bottom one? I mean, blue, really? Hey, Princess, look, this is you. 
you know, crazy. Crazy. It's going to be a long story. It's 20 years of doing this thing. It's okay. These are these are not like any baby ones. These are massive. Like Those the are the massive. Ones. Those are the good ones. Ryan Snook oh. said, let's go. That's right, baby. <laughs> you know me. Come on, guys. You're going to light it up inside the house? <laughs> the cat's in the box. Yeah. You know, <laughs> Now he better not Frank light that up inside the house. Well, that's <laughs> that, no, that's not. Hey, what model is that? What model is this? <laughs> you better light it up outside, Dustin. <laughs> oh man, I love it. I love it. It's always, it's always interesting. It is. I know. He keeps, he, keeps, he keeps me on my toes at the track all the time. <laughs> I bet he does. It's funny. I, uh, so uh, we're hanging out. My buddy Matt's like, uh, go gather your friends. Like, this is how VIP we had it. So, like, go gather what friends you want to come. We take a uh, drink cart. He says, go, go get your buddies. And to get to the court show at night time, it's like different, three different security gates. You know, he's got all the keys, all of it. So he says, go tell your friends we're going to go to the court screw. We're going to fire off some. <laughs> were, you, were, you, were you guys were actually peeing down the court, the court screw? Huh? We, oh, peeing on it? Corkscrew and pee down the, the corkscrew. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So you gotta pee with right here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but Damon, Damon is my uh, business partner on this this thing. He told me, No, I went there with the guys and, and pee down the corkscrew. What? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It was like all fog cover and stuff, and he was like, You just sit up the thing, you know. Like you're at the corks are on it, you know. I got a, I got, I brought home some gravel on my shirt, my shirt, like a little pocket protector, you know. I was like, scooping gravel. I thought the at the at the uh, what is the uh, the uh, gift shop? It charged like a hundred bucks for a little medicine bottle of gravel. Okay. Damn. Pretty wild. All right, guys. I know we got to go. It's family night. Now you you good? We'll- uh, 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 my funny story, Laguna. When I was there, uh, they had this. Uh, it said uh, "corkscrew view" sign. They had them screwed on the trees, so uh-huh. I pulled one off the tree and brought it back. It's actually hung up in my garage. <laughs> I had to, man. It was my way. Yeah, I went there in 05. I had to do it. I hope nobody's listening. <laughs> it was funny because it was so windy. So all you, we're at the corkscrew, right? And we, you think it's a corkscrew? Listen, it's not sunny racing. You got two corner marshals. This is. Sick I know. Oh, coming in. You can barely see down the bottom of the corkscrew. It's cold. It's windy. It's just like, and we're all like this, trying to like, we all got our hoodies over here and masks. Like, it's me, Johnny, and Matt. They want to borrow. He's like, well, I can see it now. Three idiots blow their faces off, you know? <laughs> like, I, I, know I, I know, Chris, one time I was, uh, I, I came uh, back, I came back from uh, Roblin Road. How do I get yeah. in here? I messed up. Uh, you turned your camera off, I think. No, I didn't mean to. Hold on a second here. Hold on a second. What's going on here? Did I mess I up? Back. I don't mess this up. I got it. I got it. I got it. Is that you there guys? You okay. Yep. One time I came back right. from Baltimore and I was emptying the trailer. I go, uh, this this extinguisher doesn't belong to me. <laughs> Did somebody put the, the extinguisher from the garage from Rolling Road into one of my trailers? And uh, they stay in the garage still. So, you know, just I'm embarrassed to take it back. <laughs> right? Oh, You're like, uh, it's been there since 2012. Yeah, I, I live, in the, I live in the country now. This is this is not South Peach, but yeah, this is my little property. This is my grandpa. My, this is a vine my grandpa made. Oh, God, how long ago? Oh, man. <laughs> Harold said, hate me. The neighbor Harold. They, they won't hate you. They'll love you. It's, Harold said this could be a good time to exercise our Fifth Amendment rights. <laughs> oh, yeah. We can fight. Go for it. He's here. Fire it off. You guys ready? Yep. Fire in the hole. It's Dustin's birthday. Make, here make we sure go. Your, mama, your grandma is not nearby. Right. Oh. <laughs> love it. His no, neighbor, his dogs. Police gonna roll up. Somebody out here shooting shotguns, blowing up shit. No, it's crazy, man. On the weekends, it's like, uh, who can, uh, who can fire off the most ammunition? It's illegal here. I live in the country, so every uh, it's my little man cave in the carport. But yeah, 
it's like pow pow next pow, never, pow, 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 pow. next guy brings out a machine gun it's like it's crazy here you like you don't like uh, i'm the firework guy and these guys got like it's whatever <laughs> i love it harold said granny said you're in deep shit now dustin <laughs> i know i always am right i was born in it <laughs> i thrive in it <laughs> That's oh, this is basically scary. It's okay. It's not just fireworks. Yeah. Hey guys, it's been an absolute pleasure, man. Much love. Oh, wait a minute. We gotta wait till one eleven. One eleven. Fifty eight seconds away. Yep. No. No. Listen, it, it's been an absolute honor uh, again, Dustin, to have you back on. I'll definitely get you back on. We'll schedule. I need you two to stay on with me just for a minute. Yep. When, when I end the podcast, I just want to say thanks to everybody that watches, uh, watches them live, goes back and rewatches them. Oh. Or nope, listen nope, to them on Spotify or our heart, wherever you guys listen to them at. If you guys have not had a chance, please go to my YouTube and Spotify and hit that uh, like and subscribe button for me. It helps me out a lot. I love every single one of you guys and girls. It's always an absolute honor to sit down and do this. I will be at New Jersey for the last round of Moto America. So I'm super excited to see all my friends. And hopefully I'll see some of you guys there too as well. Trust me, you won't miss me walking through the paddock. It's just bright pink shirt and yeah. You'll see me, but uh, it's an absolute honor again to have the birthday boy and the legend himself, Dustin. That's right, back on the podcast. And and, and a real surprise and and an honor to have Frank De La Renta. I hope I said that right. That's right, yes, yes, on the podcast. And uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned because I'm gonna have him back, I'll have him on for his first time. And uh, so, but I can't even talk right now. Before we get off here, I got to give a couple shout outs to my sponsors Bison, Chef Eats. Everybody loves Chef Eats. And if you guys haven't got any Chef Eat meals, go to chefeats.com and order them. They're the most amazing meals you can get. Uh, Flying Eyes Optics, RD Racing, my buddy Jake Marsh out there, and BSB. Uh, Vet 2 Track and the whole SFL Mini, Michael Carrera and, and Jillian, uh, they're absolutely proper mega. Um, if anybody's in Florida or, or down south, please look up SFL Mini GP. Get in. You, you don't need shit. You just show up and register. They provide everything, the bikes, the gears, the gloves, the boots, the whole nine. And again, don't buy an off-the-rack suit. Go to bison.com and, and, and get yours started. Dustin, what would you like to say? Before we end the podcast, it's man, it's been fun, guys. This is fun. Just like I'm chill. I'm, I guess getting old, I get I calm down. <laughs> you ain't calm down. That's some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> That's straight bullshit, Dustin. I don't uh, know. Man. It's, just, it's been fun, man. I appreciate all of you guys. I really do. And whoever took the time out of the day to come and join us uh, for this little bit, man, thank you guys. And Frank, much love. I'll be over there. I'll call you after this, and we'll. Uh, Kind of come up with a game plan as far as getting that water pump in for you guys to go kick some ass. No, no, I, got, I, got, I got it. I took it off. I can put it back in. <laughs> True, but I mean, it was, I'll call you. But anyways, yeah. thank you. Thank you all so, so much. Absolutely. Uh, Nothing but love. And Frank, is there anything you'd like to say before I end this? Well, I I got, I, I, I logged in because of uh, to wish uh, Dustin happy birthday. And uh, yes, he had grown a little bit. That's why he's Racing the sidecar now, not on the passenger side. <laughs> All at once. Right. Uh, it's been a great experience. This is actually my first podcast. I've never been on a podcast. Cool. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I don't. You know, go around and and you know, I'm very humble all the time. I'm not a. Uh, you know, loud. I've been at, I've been around for twenty years, but on the race, you know, environment. I started with uh, Herman Baca. Uh, back in 2005, so uh, yeah, so uh, I, I'm very quiet, you know. I just sponsor and help people out as much as I can, you know. You just pass your knowledge to the new generation. That's it. That's my thing. That's right. I, I love it, dude. And Frank, I'll have you back on. We'll get a chance to tell your whole story and and, and get it out there. We'll have a really good time like I I tell everybody, right? So listen, guys and girls, thank you guys so much for joining another Live Pin the Gas podcast. This episode will be out on Spotify, iHeartRadio, and all that good stuff tomorrow. And uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned, and we will see you later. All right, guys, hang on one second.